Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a digital nomad? You travel, you work, life is good, but is it though? I feel like people nowadays tend to romanticize the digital nomad life a lot. Let's talk about some ugly truths that you can expect while traveling, working and living your digital nomad life. Ever since moving to Europe, I started traveling a lot, so I had to work while traveling. And that's not the easiest thing to do because it comes with a bunch of problems. For example, you need to find a spot for work and if you're working with your phone or your like you know ipad that's fine but if you have a laptop a portable screen keyboard mouse you know where i'm headed right so you need like at least a desk a table a coffee table a comfortable chair because if you're planning to work for like you know a few hours sitting in a cafe like this not good also depends what you do because if you write in you know blog posts just type in, just type in. But if you edit videos and you like, you need to have a mouse and everything, not comfortable. And that's not the biggest problem. The next one, the Wi-Fi. Because if you're working with heavy stuff, images, videos, IT, like programming, you need to have reliable Wi-Fi. And for example, if you're in Europe, my cellular plan is fine. I can always, you know, turn on the modem on my phone and just like work from it. But I had cases where the internet was like, no, we were in Panama in February. I've spent, I don't even know how many hours to upload my video to send to my editor and then to download it and then upload it to YouTube. I was like, what do I do? Because I cannot use my European SIM card. I mean, I can, but the roaming charge is going to be like a lot. The hotel Wi-Fi, it's good for Instagram, you know, but it's not good for uploading six, seven gigs of video things. And yes, you can always find coffee shops that have nice Wi-Fi, nice working areas. But for example, in Lisbon, many coffee shops were like, we're done, <laughs> done, no laptops. You can see those stickers in many, in the majority of coffee shops, I would say. Yes, there are places like, for example, Copenhagen Coffee Lab, and they allow people to work. There are other places that allow laptops, but not all of them. So you, A, you need to find a place where to work. B, that place should have a nice reliable Wi-Fi and considering the fact that other people are working too might be a problem the next one is that it can be expensive to travel and if you have poor planning skills you're bad with time management that can be the case some destinations are just expensive while I can get to London for 20 years round trip me flying from Lisbon to Munich is at least 200 no matter if it's like summer winter if it's like low season high season what i've learned after moving to europe that some airports have those like chargers or whatever you call them when you buy a ticket and they have those service chargers you can find the airport fees and some airports are cheap like going from lisbon to you know copenhagen or to ireland or to the uk cheap but from lisbon to like amsterdam like you know east Germany and everything, it's like two, three hundred easily. However, however, if you plan ahead, you can get those cheap tickets, just set alerts on platforms like Kayak or like Skyscanner, they will send you everything. Another problem that you might face if you're planning to be a digital nomad, if you're planning to work and travel and everything, you might forget what date it is. You will be working all the time because of the time zones. And on top of that, you might forget what date it is because you're just like, you know, working. Since you're not tied to a specific schedule and you're working when you're working, no idea. And especially if you live in like Portugal or Spain, if you take my calendar from me, I, I could never tell you what is it because it's sunny 360 days a year whether it's July, November, March, I have no idea. The only way I know there is like a holiday or something, A, my cycling studio is like, Friday we close at noon, I'm like, should be a holiday. Or if some of my Canadian friends are like, we are having a long weekend and I'm like, must be Easter. And if you're working in one time zone and traveling in another one, you need to be careful with time zones. You need to adapt your traveling and work schedules because if you're planning to see some sites, if you want to explore like the new country, the new city, 
you need to be aware of what's happening and while i'm working for canada for example and traveling in europe for me it's perfect like while i'm doing my sites museum everything canada is sleeping it's like 5 a.m for them but once they wake up around 12 1 p.m maybe i need to work also most of the calls are 9 a.m 10 a.m calls so for me it's like lunch time however every time every year i come to canada and i do not like it because i'm in the same time zone with the rest of the people they start their work day at nine i don't like that i like to have my morning coffee my morning workout my morning walk while they're sleeping and i'm in europe but now we are all in canada and we all have to start at nine and i'm like oh that's tough another thing about being a digital nomad that many people don't realize is that you need to pack everything in one backpack or in one suitcase and if you're flying like big airlines one suitcase is fine but if you let's say backpacking or whatever in europe you literally need to use one backpack and if it's summertime that's fine you just get your swimsuit like you know a few tops like super easy like some flip-flops maybe sneakers for walking but if it's winter fitting everything in one backpack can be a struggle and if you're traveling for like a week or two or maybe even three that's fine but if you are a digital nomad you have to have you know everything with you unless you have some bases around the world for example like in canada in europe and then like in bali and you can come to europe and be like hey it's winter i need to like get my warm clothes with me and leave the summer clothes here and then go somewhere else but if you like constantly you know moving around first of all a lot of respect for you because i could never even though i'm traveling with uh, one backpack only another thing that people might not realize about being a digital nomad about constantly working and traveling is that you're gonna lose your friends eventually and yes it really depends on your friends on your relationships and everything however you know the connection you had might loosen a bit you gonna miss all the major events and everything i'm not saying it's gonna happen 100 percent of the times but this has happened to me many times but on the other side you can always find some meetups you can find some digital nomad gatherings in the new city you can make new friends meet new people so i mean it really depends on you and your friends i personally keep in touch with the majority of my friends not gonna lie with like all of them so we talk every week catching up you know sending those uh telegram circular messages and everything so it really it really depends on you and your friends i'm gonna say another problem that people don't realize about being a digital nomad is that you have to know everything about visas taxes legal stuff and everything and those things they will depend on your passport on your residency on your tax residency you know what i'm saying if you don't want to deal with that you need to hire a lawyer to be sure if you want to deal with it yourself you can always find some forums or like platforms where people like yourself are discussing things some countries in the world have actually introduced digital nomad visas portugal spain canada I don't know if there are any digital nomads going to Canada, please let me know because when I saw that piece of news, I was like, who goes to Canada to be a digital nomad? Like, I mean, Canada is great, but like, you know, surfing in Portugal and then Tulip Fest in Canada? Let me know, let me know. And I think if you're not ready for that life, you're gonna start to hate it at some point. You're gonna start missing home, missing your routines, missing your favorite mug. I honestly don't think being a digital nomad or even a frequent traveler is for everybody. When I moved to Portugal, I was like, yeah, it's so fun. You go to like new countries every month, like whatever, every couple of months. But at some point I was like, I kind of miss home. I kind of miss my cats, my, you know, coffee grinding in the morning. I miss my workouts and everything. So I think you need to be mentally prepared for that, but also you need to be a certain type of people to become a digital nomad. Because I don't think I'll be able to pack all my life in one backpack and then like, you know, fly there and there and be like, yeah, let's figure it out later. I need a plan. You know, I'm that type of person who needs a plan, who needs all her like, you know, cute little things legos and posters and like 
you know, you know. So yeah, if you are a digital nomad watching this video for some reason, or you're planning to be one, let me know how it's working for you. Maybe you have some insights on the digital nomad life that you can share with others. And as always, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching and supporting me. And see you guys next week. Bye.